There's Bugget Nuster. Slowly, I repeat, slowly working on a fire for us. Yeah. If the cider's disappearing a little bit faster than the fire is growing. <laughs> Hits a spot though, oh, doesn't it? Oh, it does. About 20 degrees out here. Bugget and I are kind of on a, I don't know, what is this? A tactical camping trip? Car variety? Yeah, car camping slash, I don't know, proof, proof testing some gear actually for me. Yeah. A couple of rifles that I haven't really run much. Yeah. And we're trying to stay warm right now. We're gonna get the cooking going here in just a second. By the way, his knife of choice, A2 Felkneven, Falkneven. You yep. love that blade, don't you? I love that thing, and, and uh, you know, thanks to you and, and a couple of those knife cuttings that we did a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, we just got to hammer the crap out of. Yeah. I mean, my a A2. dozen, a dozen knives, really. We did. And this thing just splits like crazy. Great profile, laminated yep. Fiji tin steel. It's excellent. Love that knife. Yep. All right, so this is what we're looking at, guys. We've got our tent set up. It's a huge REI car camping tent. Love this thing. Forget the name of it. If you're gonna car camp, you might as well be comfortable, right? <laughs> you ought to see the inside of it, man. Talking about comfortable. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you the inside quite yet. You guys will laugh. You hungry, Bugget? I'm starving. All right, let's get busy. This is a kitchen tonight. It is an L.L. Bean shelter. A little bit warmer in there because the wind picks up, chills. Oh, whew. man. Lighting duties provided by a night force. Yeah, haven't reviewed a light forever. I think that's an MH40 Thor or something like that. Great light so far. A few provisions stuck in the ice box here. We are gonna make mountain man stew tonight. There is the Primus Firehole 100 stove and I need to get busy. I have some of the carrots, celery prepped already. There's our meat. The cut of meat I'm gonna use for the, the stew is actually a pretty good cut, sirloin, because I don't wanna sit here and cook it forever. Stew meat, you can do it, but you need to, I don't know, stew it forever, get it tender. So let's go into mothership, cut the meat up. And the rustling you hear is me brushing up against a tent. That's just how it's gonna be, sorry. <laughs> These are actually, as you can tell, pretty austere circumstances. But if you can cook good food here when it's 20 degrees out, you can cook good food anywhere. The knife I'm gonna be using right now is a Condor Garuda. Check that out. Yeah, I got some cooking oil on that exposed portion so it doesn't rust. And I sharpened it on the Edge Pro Apex and this sucker is razor sharp. I did the cutting test on this already and it really did good. I was surprised. Ah, this meat's getting frozen, it's cold. Okay, we're gonna cut this up, we're gonna brown it in about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I will season the meat then in the pan. As you saw with the stir fry video, I will always cook the meat separately from the vegetables. You wanna brown it, sear it, that kind of thing. And this meat being a better cut, again, shouldn't have to be cooked forever. Oh, that knife is cooking cutting well. Okay, nothing fancy. Be careful you don't cut yourself this time. Roger that. I'll do it. Sick. Got a vein in there. I'm cutting that out. I'll muck it down if it makes its way in there. Trust me. This is mountain cooking. Outdoor cooking. Can't be too particular. Now, every time I make this stew recipe, it's a little bit different. I season it a little bit different. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it's better than other times. I don't know why, because <laughs> more or less I follow the recipe, maybe varying the amounts of stuff that I put in it. Cutting a little bit of fat off. Still liking this Primus fire hole so far. I have noticed that the ignition switch is a little bit sticky now for that, whatever that's worth. Good enough, right there. Throw a little bit of that out for the coyotes. And let's crank this sucker up. This thing is what I'm talking about. That's sticky. Man, it's a bugger. 
That's what I'm talking about, the things you learn. I don't know if it's because it's so cold or what. Huh? What's going on? Uh, it's just a igniter on this thing is causing problems on the fire hole. Ah, dang, I can't turn that. Yep, so I gotta get my lighter. Hang on a second. Here we go. Big old pot, car camping variety. We're not backpacking here. No need to watch the weight critically. Really turn that on high. Full blast, actually. Then we're gonna put about two tablespoons of oil in here. I don't have a tablespoon measure. I'll just use this. Hey, nothing fancy. Do you always cook this way? Um, no, I don't. Once in a while, I will. Especially when you guys come along, like right now, I'll cook this way. But if I was out here, just me and bug it, we'd do something, something probably a little bit simpler. Maybe just something really quick to cook. Not always though. I mean, you guys know I love good food and I'm willing to work to get it. I think you'll see this recipe is pretty awesome. So here comes the meat. Oh yeah. Now this is actually antelope that we killed earlier in the day. Kidding. We did see a huge herd of antelope today though. It's the same one we've seen all along. Love those antelope, they're cool. They make visiting out here most excellent. Now we're gonna start seasoning a little bit, so I'm gonna put some salt on this stuff. I didn't bring any special salt, just a little container right here. Okay, and while we're doing that, I'm going to prep some other ingredients. Get my big spatula. Oh, yeah! You guys see that good? <laughs> I laugh, this cookie show is such a joke. There we go. Oh man, that's gonna be good. Like a freaking bearded Paul Dean. What is it? It's gonna be like a bearded Paul Dean. <laughs> Bug it says I'm like a bearded Paula Dean in here. Well, the bros got to know what's going on. Move that nasty part right there. Oh man. Okay, so while that's cooking up, browning, and we will let that brown totally before we uh we put water in and maybe some more seasonings. I guess I can't add my Worcestershire sauce. We're going to do a tablespoon according, actually two tablespoons. Ugh, am I getting that right? No, one tablespoon according to Paula. I think I add a little bit more though. So we'll do that. This is Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to do another half for there. And then once we taste it, this thing gets going. Of course, we're going to season to taste, right? Now, as that's browning too, I guess we can add some other stuff here. We're going to add a couple bay leaves. The recipe calls for one to two bay leaves, so We'll do that right there. Garlic, and they're saying one clove of garlic. I just have this. It's so much easier to work with, minced garlic. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that about a clove? Yeah, let's go with that. We're not gonna overdo the garlic on it. 
may change. I already salted it some already, but I'm gonna add a little bit more. It says one teaspoon of salt. <laughs> Can you guys even see this? Oh my gosh, it is so foggy in here, bug it. I don't even know if these guys can see this. It's so cold out and this is creating so much steam. Dude, I'll try to show you. I'll do my best. That's in there. I'm gonna do, how much salt? One teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna just measure that out with my hand. Yeah, that's good. Half a teaspoon of pepper. It's good. <coughs> We've got freaking allspice. A dash of allspice is what the recipe calls for. Allspice and paprika are kind of the key seasonings here. So a dash. I'm gonna throw that in right there. Half a teaspoon of paprika. <laughs> These guys aren't gonna be able to see. It is totally clouding over in here, dude. Steaming bad. <laughs> Come here and here and look. <laughs> Can you even see it? Oh my gosh, it's so you, steamed you out. your own weather system in here. I can't, I'm not gonna move all this either outside. Oh it's gosh, too much work. Oh my gosh, it smells good. Thanks, brother. Here's paprika. At least you can hear it, you can't see it. This is gonna be a half teaspoon of paprika, <laughs> TMPers. <and Peters. laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit more. There, like that. There you go. Oh yeah, buddy. I kind of wish the wind would pick up now. It'd help blow this out, my friend. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, the desert kitchen, man. Gosh, this is just so funny. You got the matches handy in there? Yeah, I do. You want a lighter or matches? Here, here's some uh, light lifeboat matches. They freaking rock. You can't get a fire started with that, something's wrong with you. Oh my gosh, this is just too insane. Too much, too much. Ah, let me see if I can clear this off for you guys a little bit. Ah, that's a little bit better. For now, let's see what else do I need to add. Garlic, bay leaves, onion. Okay, we gotta chop that onion up. So here we go, we're over here, chopping again with the Garuda. Can you guys see that? Maybe, maybe not. Whatever, you can hear it. I would relocate it, but man, it's too much work. I'm not doing that. Too much work. Especially with Bugget, man, because when he gets hungry, I mean, he gets like ornery and stuff. Close. Amount of onion you're going to use in this recipe is one medium onion. So uh, we're using a fair amount. I'm going to use most of this onion in here. Steam still fogging up the camera. It is what it is. Maybe once it starts simmering, you'll be able to see again. Maybe. Mountain stew. Oh, this is gonna be good. Yeah, buddy. You see that? All the steam. Okay, this is probably a good time to add our water, now that we've kind of browned that. Come on, Fancy, I can't tell if you've browned it or not. Take this out. Put it out here a little bit, see if it'll clear up. 
a little bit of water. I defogged the lens for you. Don't know how long it'll stay that way. I put in three cups. Recipe calls for two cups of water. So cold out that whole thing's going frozen on me. There we go. That's pretty lean meat, so I didn't drain it. Plus, in these cold conditions, we can use the extra fat. So I'm gonna bring that to a boil. Double check my recipe, make sure I don't need to add anything else. So carrots, we're gonna be slicing those up pretty soon here. Pepper, paprika, allspice, did it. Now the recipe says cover and simmer one and a half hours. What? We don't have that kind of time. We'll probably cover it for about 45 minutes like that. And I'm gonna put the rest of these onions in, might as well. It's like I lost my MH40 light, it just died. Well, the batteries died. I, I never charged them, just out of box using them. Okay, so I think I need a little bit more salt and actually I'm gonna use some of this, my favorite. Give it a little kick. Not too much, just about like that. A little bit more salt, because remember the salt was, I think, what does it say, one teaspoon or something like that? And now we're gonna cover it and simmer it. Get that lid. And then once it's cooked a little bit, we're gonna chop up the carrots, celery, I have some regular potatoes, and finger potatoes I'm gonna put in there as well. And then we'll cook it some more. We're gonna let it cook just for a bit. It's like our igniter's working again. That's good news. Hey, so is our MH40. I think this switch was just depressed by the snow and ice, I think. So that's gonna simmer there for a while. I think they wanna cook it for one and a half hours because it's stew meat. But since we're using sirloin, like we said, we don't have to cook it that long. Oh, that might be breakfast. A rare treat of bacon. Eat your heart out there, tactical doodle. Wood's kind of moist, ain't it? Yeah, it is, unfortunately. You could come inside that shelter there. It's like a sauna. Yeah, I bet it's a little moist in there, too. It's warm with all that steam coming off the, the stew there. How long is that stuff going to cook? Three hours. You good with that? Yeah, that's great. I'm gonna go get a bag of nuts. <laughs> no, we'll do probably, I said 45 minutes, but maybe 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'll uh, put veggies in. I think it'll work out. I think you'll like it. Next time you're cooking. Didn't we do, what did we do up in uh, winter solstice? Snossages, wasn't it? Yeah, we did uh, Polish sausage and uh, some chili and well, we all know how that ended. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just remember you sitting basically three feet away from me while I'm sighting in a rifle and you're blowing out your squirrel gravy. <laughs> Seriously, I wanted to show you guys on camera, but he wouldn't let me. So we just edited that part out. No one watched that freaking series anyhow, so I just gave up on it. I, didn't, I don't even think I ever posted all the parts of that. No, I don't think you did either. I, just, I don't think there's enough interest. Too boring. Shined it. Kind of like this. I think I'm gonna throw some cabbage in it too. Let's chop that up right there. Remember, cabbage cooks down like a lot. The original recipe does not call for cabbage, but I change all the recipes I make pretty much just to personal taste. More veggies is good veggies, usually. We both like cabbage, so we're going to do that. And I'm cookie tonight. Two kinds of potatoes. 
I just peeled these. These are just regular russets. I'm a big potato fan. I love them. Love them. I'm going to kind of dice these a little bit smaller so they cook faster. Right about like that. Kind of a weird angle here because of the tripod. No, I'm not going to cut myself. That was kind of a fluke actually on that last one. Knife just sitting on the cutting board. Come on now. Oh, yeah. This is kind of hardcore bug it cooking like this. It's freezing outside. Water's freezing. These are those little fingerling potatoes, by the way. I'm going to leave these unpeeled. I think they'll add some, I don't know, good flavor, visual interest to the stew. That's right, I said visual interest. You want your food to look good and taste good. Two-pronged approach. Preferably without alley hair in it, too. Preferably. This little Condor Garuda knife is doing really good as a camp knife. In this situation, a food preparation knife. We're going to have a lot of veggies in there. Dude, these russets. How's that fire going, Bugget? Huh? It sucks, he says. Cool. It's nice to do something besides fire duty for a change. It's usually my chore. Oh man, I have a lot of carrots. Benny Hanna's. Celery adds a nice flavor. Take it slow as we near the fingers. Especially with how sharp this knife is. Insane sharp. Insane. I think some moisture got into that. Working normal now. Let's see how we're doing in here. Oh yeah. Take a little taste. Needs more seasoning. I need to fine tune it. So I tuned it up with a little bit more Worcestershire sauce. Threw in some Lowry salt. That's right. And a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit more allspice and a little bit more of this. Because this is not as potent as fresh garlic, so I added some more. And we're to a point where we can add the vegetables. Check that out. Oh, oh dudes. Mountain man stew. Let's crank that heat up on the fire hole. <laughs> that name. Fire hole, that is so funny. Fire hole 100. Bring that to a boil. Start steaming that stuff. It'll create some more, mo more moisture and we'll add more water if we need it. Coming along. Meanwhile, let's check on the fire. How are we coming along out here, dude? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna go to NV for you guys. Can you see? Uh, Maybe see where we're at here a little bit. There's Slam, all covered in mud from the drive-in. We almost got stuck several times coming in here. Fire not doing so great. You can't really see the mountains where we're at, but it's pretty awesome. There's the moon. That's gonna be nice. Cool, huh? Yeah. We got some illuminated targets across the ridge there. 
we may or may not go engage them after dinner. Depends on how fat I'm feeling after that. Yep. We just checked the temperature, 21 degrees. Yep, and I'm feeling every bit of it. <laughs> it's cold, huh, brother? Yeah, especially when you haven't had anything to eat today. Sure enough, we've been working all day. Yep. Simmering the stew for about 25 minutes now. How's that smelling, Bucket? Oh man, I'm, I'm ready to dig in. Let's take a look at it, I think it's ready. Oh, buddy, look at that. Oh. What do you think, dude? Uh, I think it's done. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, that smells good. All right, man, go ahead and dig in. I'll try to film through the stone here. And actually, I do have a ladle if you want it. Here you go. Yeah, let's use it. Bang. Check that. Maybe we should call this desert stew. Oh yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, my friend, dig in. Oh, that's good stuff there, look at that. I didn't think it, thicken it up. I didn't thicken it up, I can't speak. I did not thicken it up with uh, cornstarch. You can do that, but I'm not doing it this time. All right, taste test. I don't know, man. It looks Bug good it. to me. Proof right. is in the taste. Oh. Cooking with nothing fancy. Cold desert tonight. Got some extra seasoning sitting here. Pepper, salt, Lowry's is over there. Creole seasoning and some more Worcestershire if you need it. Life's rough out here, I tell you what. Can be. We make the most of it though, especially when we're car camping. And we don't get out and do this very often, so. Good food makes it, doesn't it? Agreed. It does have pepper in it. Give it a taste first. Oh, that's good. Is it really good? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> the veggies done about right? I think they're just right. I just want to, I don't want to be mushy, but just cooked. Enough. Dude, they're perfect. Excellent. Excellent. That is good, and it doesn't need a thing. There maybe you go. A, maybe a little heat. How about a little heat? Yeah, I meant to bring some Tabasco, but I forgot. What with all the other stuff we have to bring. Oh my gosh. Dude, this stuff is awesome. Is it? Yeah. Excellent. I'm starving too. So that's desert stew. Cooking with nothing fancy, 21 degrees out, and falling. Maybe reaching, I don't know, mid-teens tonight. That's what they say. Time to hit the chow. Cooking on the Primus Fire Hole 100. Who would name something Fire Hole? <laughs> Seriously. <Stupidest> name. <laughs> fire Hole? I said that in the tailgate stir fry. So it was a bit of work to put together. The stew, you saw the preparation. We used sirloin for it. Pre cut, not pre cut, but pre peeled carrots and pre washed celery. Saved us a little time out here. Fingerling potatoes, russet potatoes. You saw the seasonings. We had to add some more Rooster, uh, Worcestershire. I was gonna say Roostershire. I actually like that better. We had to add some more Roostershire sauce, salt, and some other stuff as you saw, but it is slamming. That Creole, whatever this stuff is, just put a little edge on it. Yeah. Oh, so good. Nice. Thanks guys for joining us. It's time to eat. We're starving. Tune in next time. Screw See that. ya. Bye.
little post log. We're going to eat this whole thing, I think, bug it. I think it's going to be gone. I don't think we're going to have to worry about leftovers. By the way, can you tell there's two different kinds of potatoes in there? Nope. There's fingerling potatoes and there's russet potatoes. Hmm. Each one has a different flavor. So fingerling potatoes are a little bit earthier. Well, the fingerlings taste good and the russets taste good. <laughs> I think we're going to down this whole pot, dude. Yep, I think so too. Seriously. Turned out just about perfect. Oh. 